I remember like he was drinking hot cocoa. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What a lasting impact. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Anna and I'm Michelle and we're the two mythical unicorns. Today we're talking about books that we read between 15 and 20. Yes. So books that were important to us and made an impact during those years. Should we start? <laughs> sure. I'll start. Right. So first up I have The Lies of Locke Lamora, mm -hmm. a Swedish version. <laughs> and I read this when I was in like ninth grade. I was just gonna say I remember you reading those, but maybe it was the sequels I remember then. Yeah, possibly. I, I tried the sequels, it didn't get very far. <laughs> it, it is very interesting in the world building and how he works with telling the story. The story is very, very slow paced and there are a lot of things that might not be that relevant. <laughs> so yeah, learned a lot from reading this. I'm gonna go with the one that was spoiled in the last one. Yeah. The book thief. <laughs> this is the Swedish translation. Um, I technically have two or three copies of this book. I don't know. This was one of the first stories I remember l like enjoying that was set during the Second World War. I was never a fan of war novels. They make me anxious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just generally. <laughs> so I don't get too excited about those. But this is really freaking good. <laughs> it's just, it's still one of the best books I've ever read. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And I still, I reread this every now and again and it still holds up. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Next up, I have Vampire Academy. <laughs> and I think in English, the first one is called Thirst. This is where my vampire obsession started. <laughs> mm -hmm. It. I'm not gonna go back and reread them <laughs> because they are like 16 in the beginning. So yeah, I'm not gonna go back and read them and figure out what is wrong with them. I just loved them when I read them. Yes. Vampire Academy. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> they were what they were. We enjoyed them a lot when we read them. They're not to be reread. <laughs> It's also one of these, because I never got these, I borrowed yours. Yeah, because I was like on book four when yeah. we met. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I started reading them, them at, at probably 16, mm. possibly. Well, we loved them. We talked so much about these books. Like this was a big series for us yeah. back in the day. I, I wouldn't say... <laughs> There, there's we're, a lot. We're not gonna go back. No, it's a lot the, that we don't agree with in this. <laughs> we're gonna keep them preciously in our memories. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> yeah. They stay yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter and the <laughs> Deathly Hollows. Last one. <laughs> yeah. When I got this one, I walked through the hallways at school between classes and read. That is how obsessed I was. <laughs> I read it in ninth grade, because that is when I got it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, <laughs> that doesn't make sense, never mind. <laughs> yeah, that is when I got it. I, I hid from, <laughs> from the world yeah. for a while, like, no spoilers! As Harry Potter, like, yeah, had to make it. <laughs> Again. This, this was the last one, okay? <laughs> of an era. It was, to be fair, it really was. Yeah, yeah it yeah. was. We talked so much about those books. I can't believe we're going from Harry Potter to this. To the sequel, because I have a feeling you might have the first one. <laughs> hush, hush. <laughs> now, this in particular is on my... It's on my list because the only, the sole reason I read through all of those is you. <laughs> I would never, ever have finished this series if it wasn't for you freaking pushing me to. This is the one and only series where I've been like, I could have been done after the second book, which is this one, Crescendo, because I was like, I'm done with this now. This is enough. And you were like, no, there's more books. I need to know how it ends. Well, you could have done that without me, but no. That's not as fun. You know, most people on here are here because they want to talk with people about books. <laughs> but I want to talk about good books. And the last two were 
crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this series is such like a big deal because the first book we both loved. Like it was. Don't reread it. But it was <laughs> so good. <laughs> Don't go back. Don't go back. <laughs> Leave it there. Like it was post Twilight. We read a lot of paranormal romance. Yeah. Things and that one just hit the spot. Yeah. It just really did. But uh, don't read the sequels. Don't read them now <laughs> at all. Yeah. They were a big deal back then. I mean, if you're 15 and you haven't read Hush Hush, go ahead. Go ahead, have some. like. But when you're 25, <laughs> don't. No. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Ink Heart mm. by. Uh... Yeah, I still don't know how to pronounce it. Clearly, I forget. <laughs> and this also made a very big impact. I got it for Christmas and then I'm like, that was all I did. <laughs> did it, end it, and then I had to get the second one. I, I remember very, very clearly reading this one. I, I thought it was very good, I'm not gonna go back. 13 Reasons Why, Jay Asher. This is a Swedish translation, and uh... <laughs> This book is so sad. <laughs> it's so good. It's so well written. It's really like, I could not put this book down. It's, it was one of those. Like I needed to know the ending. Yeah. I needed to know why he was on those freaking tapes. <laughs> it was really good. It's one of these stories that's just really stuck with me. I haven't reread it since I read it the first time, which is uncommon for me. Um, but I just, I haven't, I can't <laughs> put myself through it. And no, I loved it. It was really yeah, good. Yeah. Um, I should probably try and reread it, but I don't know at the same time because they are like 15 or something. Yeah. But it's really good. And now we're uh, <laughs> coming to the English <laughs> part. This is when I uh, switched over to reading in, in, in English mm. instead of Swedish. It was Twilight. And I read this just after I finished ninth grade. Yeah. But the movie, I actually saw the movie before I read the book. Mm. So the obsession started before the reading. Like, this had such an impact. Yeah, 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 I know. It's actually like, ridiculous. The f I didn't really want to read the fourth one. Oh. I actually almost quit after yeah. the third one. The first one was by far the one that stuck with me the most. Oh yeah, same here. I read a lot of sad books, didn't I? Looking for Alaska. <laughs> John Green. This was, I read this book and I had no clue who John Green was. I didn't know about Hank Green or Vlogbrothers or any of the things. It was a year or so before The Fault in Our Stars came out. And I just randomly like found it in our local bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> like the really tiny one. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. <laughs> In that, English. That is impressive. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know how this happened. And uh, yeah, I cried a lot <laughs> whilst reading this yeah. book. I remember because I sat um, on my mother's uh, balcony at the time and uh, I, I had, for some reason, yeah, I was just sitting there reading and she came out and I had like mascara down my face. <laughs> and she was like, what are you doing to yourself? <laughs> so this was like, this was the opening to me reading every single John Green book that exists. Yeah. yeah. And I still love him and his writing. So. Yeah. 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 Continuing on the same theme. <laughs> Nicholas Sparks. Generally anything Nicholas Sparks. Yeah, really. Uh, I Because <laughs> I read this for English class. Oh, and, yeah uh, We had to read something and this one was what I chose. So this is the first Nicholas Sparks <laughs> I read and I think we watched like all the movies. Oh, yeah, we did. this was like a big thing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in our high school uh, yeah. era. <laughs> yes, it was for us. Yes, no. for the two of us <laughs> No, no one general. else <laughs> Nicholas Sparks. That there was also a lot of crying involved oh, in yeah. reading those books. But like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have to think of the English title. Right. Because this is the first Patrick Ness book that I ever read. Again, had no clue who he was. <laughs> I didn't even consider because I didn't uh, 
in these ages, I if there was an English author, I would rather read them in English. For some reason, I didn't consider the fact that Patrick Ness probably wasn't Swedish. <laughs> this is the first book in the Chaos Walking trilogy. So this is The Knife of Never Letting Go. And uh, yeah, this is one of the few trilogies that I've actually finished. <laughs> and actually liked all three books which is very very uncommon for me yeah yeah i, I tend to drop off after halfway through the second book so yeah. <laughs> yay. yay this was very good <laughs> and now we have <laughs> hush hush uh -huh. and this this was good like <laughs> it was so we, good we were mean about the, <laughs> the sequels <laughs> but the first one Yes, the, this was... Uh... Essentially Twilight, but with angels. Yeah, <laughs> that is exactly what we needed when it came. Well, yeah, that was what we were looking for yeah. at the time, so it worked and, out perfectly. And it was just... It was great. Yeah, <laughs> I still think about it from time to time. <laughs> Not gonna reread it, like, don't. But, but thinking about how it made me feel when at I read it. At the time. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We um, talked so much about these books. Yeah. That, that is what we did through high school. We talked about books. Essentially. Yeah. And some movies. Yeah. <laughs> the Perks of Being a Wallflower mm -hmm. by Stephen Chipowski. Like everyone else probably, or like a lot of people, I realized that this was a book after the movie came out. It's funny because like, yeah, I'd seen the movie already. So you know the climax of... Yeah. Yeah. There's... there's a point to not knowing a lot before going into this book but I can tell you this is just as good <laughs> even if you've seen the movie um, and it's kind of quite different actually it was one of the first times where that worked out where like seeing the movie first and reading the book after I could see them as separate things which yeah. hadn't really happened to me <laughs> previously because I was always like it's not the same thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, you don't say. <laughs> no, no, it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's like, no, because they're different medias, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, but I love this. And this is another one. I can reread this. This still mm. holds up. Those pictures make me sad. I haven't seen this cover before. Mm. Uh, I've mostly just seen the movie, movie cover. cover. Uh, but those pictures make me very sad. Well, he's not a happy boy, is no. he? No! <laughs> he makes me sad. As I said, I seem to have been reading a lot of sad we, books. We did a lot of sad. <laughs> we did. In school. We really did. Yeah. And then we have... John Green! John Green. <laughs> he made an appearance in my life as well. <laughs> it took a little longer before I found him. And yeah, this is not my favorite one of his. It was just one that was... Oh. We, we did a lot of sad. This one isn't that sad. No. But it's still John Green, so it's not yeah. like... It's it's not happy happy, but like... Considering... It's not the fault in our stars we're looking for Alaska. No, no. <laughs> so, you you feel rather pleased that we're this one. We like ourselves some John and Hank Green. Yes, yes we do. Graceling. Yeah. That's the one. Right! <laughs> Because it's called something entirely different in Sweden. Yeah. I loved these. And it's the first time I can remember reading a fantasy trilogy that had different main characters for yeah. each book. So it was kind of like a anthology series almost. But they affected each other. So it was like reading the second book was like, oh, so the things that they did in that one yeah. affected this one, but it's another person. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, whoa! Because <laughs> I didn't read high fantasy a lot in these ages i think i i it was rather like urban fantasy and stuff like that so these sort of blew me out of the water i loved these a lot which is why i still have them and then i have <laughs> <laughs> even i was thinking about these because <laughs> because that i just had to make the list yeah because this is one of my absolute favorites mm -hmm. i have reread it still love it i do realize it has its issues yeah. but but i can't help myself no it's fine it's just like the third and the second they are not as good no like not even close they, they are fine uh -huh. like if if you need <laughs> at 
feel the need to end <laughs> the story and read all the way through. It's fine. But this one is the best by far. Yes. Intentional Dissonance by Ian S. Thomas. This is the first science fiction. Like, it's actually, it's placed into science fiction, but it's not like high sci-fi. Like, it's not like... <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> it's easy sci-fi to yeah, get into. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it's also very short, which is <laughs> yeah. very good for me. I actually discovered this because this author did uh, poems online. Mm -hmm. And you could like subscribe and you got them in your email. And I really liked those. And then he was like, I've written a book. And I was like, well, that's cool. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, had no idea what it was going to be about. Bought it anyways. And it's still one of my favorite books. So it had to make it on here. Yeah. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Because, uh, <laughs> that's my parents' book. And I read that one in Swedish because it's a Swedish book. Yeah. That was very cool. That book. I, I do actually prefer the movies mm. because they were very heavy books. Yeah, and they were. <laughs> yeah, and, large and they too. were. It it was uh, it's a lot to live in <laughs> that for that long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I actually prefer the movies. Mm. The the book, <laughs> it she is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like absolutely, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Salander. She is. <laughs> So cool and yeah that was the first book like of its kind that i read mm -hmm. and i don't know if i've read anything like it like i've read swedish thrillers and swedish crime yeah yeah but yeah. that one is just it's it's in its own category almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really good i agree yeah but uh yeah it was too heavy yeah the Storied Life of A.J. Fickery by Gabrielle Seven. This is not with me because my mother's had it for the last five years because I've tried to make her read it and it's not going particularly well. <laughs> this is essentially a book, like it's a love letter to readers, essentially. It's about a, a man who, whose wife passed away recently and he runs a bookshop. And then, <laughs> uh, an unexpected gift ends up on his doorstep and he has to take care of a child mm -hmm. on his own. And they, it's sort of like how they grow up together in, in this bookshop. And it's, mm -hmm. it's so nice. <laughs> and this is the first adult fiction that I remember like choosing to pick up. Like I know that this is adult fiction mm -hmm. and I'm still choosing it. And it was really good. So those were the <laughs> books that we remember most. Yeah. Uh, the biggest impact on us uh, between the ages 15 and 20. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of fantasy on my part. A lot of sad. A lot of sad in we life. We did a lot of sad. <laughs> we did loads of them. We did that in movies too though. Yeah. I think we were worse when it came to movies. Yes. Um, but yeah, that is what we wanted at the time. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So that was it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, do that. And until next time, bye. Bye.